Uh, hello, everyone. I will talk about Jenkins as a code and our approach at my current company. So mm -hmm. I work as a system engineer in for finance at for finance IT. Uh, I I really love FOSS, free and open source software and hardware. I'm co organizer of Warsaw Linux user group. If you want to speak about Linux or show something to the community, just ping me during the lunch. And I'm also a pretty heavy Jenkins user. Uh, okay, so I would like to do a quick poll. Do we have any Jenkins users here? Whoa, a lot. Uh, how many of you has more, less than 100 jobs in Jenkins? More than 100 jobs? More than 1,000 jobs? Okay, we've got one. So uh, maybe a few words about Jenkins. So Jenkins is a like a very very well known uh, our twinning cross-platform integration, continuous integration, continuous delivery. I like to call it framework, but they they call them by application. So. Uh, Jenkins has a very large active community. You can reach developers on mailing lists. You can even talk with Koshuke. Uh, they've got some uh, weekly hangouts. You can join them and talk with them. Uh, we have hundreds of plugins in Jenkins. So basically, whatever you want to do with your Jenkins, probably on the internet there is some plugin which does it for you. So you have to Google it, and you can do whatever you want with this, with this plugin. Uh, it's very easy. Installation and configuration of Jenkins is really easy. You have to download the jar file, run the jar file, and that's all. You have working Jenkins installation. But uh, a lot of plugins are unstable. If you ever upgraded Git plugin in Jenkins, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, some plugins are orphans. So basically, if you really care about plugin, probably someday you have to take care about development of this plugin by yourself. Uh, we had a lot of at our my, at my company we have it from finance we have a uh, few plugins which had to develop inside uh, because uh, we were waiting for developers of plugins too long to to, to respond to our uh, requests so we had to take care of them by by ourselves and upgrades of Jenkins are are almost always frightening so uh, it's really hard to upgrade Jenkins and do not break anything. Uh, so, what we did in our company is we imp implemented something called as Jenkins as a code. So the solution for all the problems is to automate all the things. So how 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 we can automate and what can be automated? So uh, the Jenkins master installation, uh, Jenkins slave creation, plugin installation, credentials configuration. Ever adding tools and so on and so forth. And the most important thing here for, for us, it was jobs configuration. So uh, how can you, how can one automate this, all the stuff? So starting with, I will talk about infrastructure side of automation and Jenkins itself. So speaking of infrastructure, we can automate Jenkins master installation and configuration. Uh, so from installing to configuring, install required plugins automatically. Uh, install and configure all the required tools like Maven, Gradle, JDK, everything. Uh, about Jenkins Slave, it's also very crucial to automate it. Mm, you can install and configure all the required tools as well. And connect Slave to master automatically. For example, if you have some auto-scaling group on AWS, you can use Jenkins or plugin to spawn new Jenkins instances automatically and connect to your master. And about configuration management tools, you can this is the this how how to how to automate this stuff. So basically, you can use some configuration management tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, uh, etc. For Puppet, there is a great module uh, for 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 automating Jenkins as well for Ansible. As uh, I don't know about Chef, but probably there is some module outside uh, in the internet to 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 automate Jenkins with Chef. And one more thing is to how to create Jenkins mass, Jenkins slaves and how to connect to them to master, because you don't want to go to Jenkins master, go ma to manage Jenkins, manage nodes, and add your slaves one by one by hand. So there's a lot of ways of doing this. So we can, one can use Jenkins Swarm plugin. And you can also create Jenkins automatically with Docker. I had to say this word, because presentation without Docker would not be good presentation. So we can use Docker plugin to create new, 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 new Jenkinses, new, new slaves. Also, we can use Groovy, con Groovy Console in Jenkins to connect new slaves via SSH to all the machines. About Jenkins, so mm, what we needed is that 
we need an audit auditable way of configuring jobs. Auditable and versioned. We had a lot of issues. For example, somebody changed the job, uh, and it stopped working, and please fix it. It was working w one week ago, so why, why it's not working right now? So, uh, and if you have these jobs already in SCM, so this is the, the base thing. You have to store version all the jobs. And then you can use Jenkins CLI. So basically, you store all the XMLs in Git or a subversion or, ever, or somewhere else. Uh, use Jenkins CLI to update the jobs. Jobs. You can use great tool for open, from OpenStack called Jenkins Job Builder. You create some YAML configuration files, uh, and it will create all the jobs for you. You can use Workflow plugin from uh, CloudBees, or you can use jo Jenkins Job DSL plugin. Uh, and this is for jobs configuration. Jo sorry, just for for jobs configuration. So, uh, what I would like to present you a case study in our company. So, we had uh, hundreds of jobs, literally hundreds of jobs, uh, almost all configured manually. We had large deployment continuous delivery pipelines with 40 jobs because we had a lot, a lot of complicated tests. So, every all of them were almost clicked con manually. Some of them were stored in Git. Uh, as XMLs, but with plain text credentials. So it, it wasn't great because InfoSec was on us and we had to change it. Uh, so it was really hard to change anything. Imagine the situation we wanted to change our SCM URL. We had to go through all the jobs. Of course, we can use Groovy Console, but you know, you have to go through the, all the jobs, change the SCM, verify if it's working or not. Uh, it was really hard to upgrade. For example, we had one Jenkins. We have one Jenkins installation which is not upgraded for over a year because we are scared of it. There is a lot of plugins and custom configuration, and if you touch it, you break it. Basically, uh, it was really hard to test changes. For example, we wanted to test new plugin version, so we had to create new machine, uh, ersync Jenkins home, bring up Jenkins, look at this and look at that, and so on and so forth. So it was really hard and time-consuming, and also it was really hard to, uh, not, not maybe hard, but it was inconvenient to, back, to backup and restore all these Jenkinses. Uh, so what we did, we used Ansible as our configuration management tool of choice. So uh, with Ansible, we automated all the installation of Jenkins Master, as well as plugin installation, initial job creation, uh, slave management. For slaves, we are using CloudFormation with auto-scaling groups. So uh, basically with Jenkins Swarm plugin, so we have AMEI with Jenkins Swarm plugin installed, and if you spin up new AC2 instance, it will connect automatically to Jenkins master, and it's ready to use. Uh, and we choose, we choose Jenkins DSL plugin for job management. Uh, any of you know Jenkins DSL? Okay, so I see some people are familiar with that. So we created Gradle project. You have Gradle project which, which can be imported in your IDE, and you have support for all the stuff which is which is used there, and we have tests. Maybe those tests are not so smart, but, but we have tests. So if you want to refactor some jobs or recreate something, it's it's very easy to uh, to, to to do refactoring and to you are not afraid of doing some stuff. So uh, this is our case study. So uh, I we've created a lot of um, we've created an open source plugin. Uh, open source project on our GitHub. There will be a link in presentation. I will post uh, for, for sure on DevOps Days website. Uh, so uh, we implemented some kind of uh, delivery pipeline for microservices in our company. And we've open sourced that. So basically, with one click, you can create all the pipelines for all your applications. You can store some, you store some Jenkins pipeline YAML file in your repository. Uh, Jenkins scans all the repository in Stash because we use Stash. So, but you can change this to scan GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever you want. Uh, it search for Jenkins YAML file in these repositories. If it finds the Jenkins YAML pipeline YAML or Jenkins YAML, it depends. It will create all the required jobs which are defined in this YAML file, uh, and it will be open source. It is open source already. Uh, probably in two weeks, it be it will be usable. <laughs> Uh, in, in, in production. We use, in, we use it in, on our production already, but we had to clean up the code and before publishing it. So I have some Jenkins installation here. So this is my Jenkins. I already provisioned this Jenkins because I was, I was not sure about the network. 
So I'm using Ansible for provisioning. I will also post this code to GitHub so you can you can be able to play with it with Vagrant. Uh, so what what this Ansible code does is it will set up all whole Jenkins, create JDK, and create some initial seed job. So this job, if we run this job, oops. We can check console output. It's empty Jenkins, right? So as you can see, we have Gradle, pro Gradle project, which runs Gradle cleanly build. It running tests. Build successful, fortunately. And we, ha we have all the projects created. So we are doing some hackathons, microservice related hackathons. And we have like brewery, microbrewery, we've created with microservices. So I've created here, I've used this code to create all the delivery pipelines here. So with one single click, remember that we have one single click, we've created pipelines for all the four products in our brewery. So aggregator, butelkator, dojewator, and presentator. <laughs> <laughs> there is also Vodeo, Swodeo, Chmileo, and so on. This is like external services. So with one click, you are able to to create all the jobs, you have these jobs in stored in SCM. I will show you the GitHub repository. It's github.com slash services hackathon. So the job definition looks like this for the pipelines. And that's all. That's, that's the whole code which is required to create all those pipelines for all the projects. So currently, in our Jenkins, we are moving all the stuff from Go CD and all Jenkins is to new approach with Jenkins job DSL. And for now, we have something about 1,000 jobs, maybe. And it's really scalable. And we have history of all the changes. And the funny thing is that you don't have to back up all the Jenkins all the time. We had a situation when one of our colleague wanted to remove a few jobs. And he misplaced the exclamation mark in Groovy, in Groovy console. So instead of removing eight jobs, he removed every job except those eight jobs. <laughs> so getting back all the, all the pipelines from Jenkins DSL took us five minutes, I guess. So it was really cool. So I encourage you to, to test it. Uh, I will post, I will, I will probably I will post the presentation with all the links to GitHub sites uh, on the DevOps Days site soon. OK. So uh, oops. So as so, there are some rumors about Jenkins 2.0 getting out soon. So, is there anybody who likes Jenkins UI here? I see one hand there in the back. Yeah, of course. But do you like, for example, this configuration page when you don't know which button is to which section? Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, Jenkins 2.0 will be released in the end of January, as, as, as the Koshuke wrote an email to mailing list, probably by the end of January. Uh, from the like the biggest changes there, it will be Groovy will be moved out of the core. So now we had a problem with Jenkins DSL uh, because if you want to new, use the newer Jenkins newer version of Groovy for some crazy stuff, you cannot because uh, older version of Groovy is still in the core. So it's like crashes. Uh, also, they will if if you ever wanted to create a new plugin for Jenkins, you know this JavaScript CSS stuff is a mess. So they will modularize all the JavaScripts in Jenkins. So it would it they said that it would be cool to, to have it. So they will also implement the new website uh, where you can find all the information easily and all the help easily and create tickets from them and so on and so forth. And they hired the guy for UX. So they already have a guy working on full time on CloudBees for UX improvements. You can you can check out the videos on YouTube how the new UX of Jenkins uh, this is enterprise because now he's implementing for enterprise, but they will also implement this in Jenkins open source. Uh, and the first step of UX was do you remember this change of color of the uh, top bar in Jenkins? So it was not the change only of the color. Uh, they've moved whole design from table-based design to div-based design. And it's like more more responsive. It's not responsive still, but it's more responsive than it was before. 
And the coolest feature, uh, they finally, they found out that they overslept maybe this era of continuous delivery and continuous uh, deployment. So they want to redesign Jenkins a little bit and keeping pipelines as a code in mind. So uh, the idea is you, that you have this Jenkins file in your repository describing your pipeline, continuous deliver pipeline, and uh, Jenkins will search in your repository for such Jenkins file. It will read the definition from Jenkins file and it will create pipeline for you. So it will use workflow for this and the the best news is that CloudBees is going to open source stage view plugin. Do you know stage view plugin? It's like a fancy, fancy view of of of, of pipelines for for Jenkins, like enterprise. You have like this nice little boxes like Go CD, fancy. So okay, uh, okay. So uh, that's all what I have to show. Basically, I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch. So. Let's, so, do you have any questions? I hope you have some questions. Oh, there's one question. Hey, thanks for your presentation. Uh, if Jenkins can be a code, is it testable? Are Jenkins job, jobs testable? Uh, uh, we do test this code like we use Jenkins DSL to generate XMLs, and we test XMLs if they are correct, for now. But you can use something like, I don't know, server spec or inspect just to test the output of, of those jobs. It's, it's, it's really hard to, to, to test those jobs right now, to okay, be honest. Thanks. OK, I can see some of you are uh, is very hungry. Okay, uh, so basically you have moved uh, job creation outside of the Jenkins, uh, as I underst uh, understand, yep. and you keep the uh, job uh, definitions in the uh, repository. Uh, how do you manage uh, updating uh, run running instance of the uh, Jenkins when some of your uh, job definition will uh, change? Uh, so. All the Jenkins we use are read-only, so you cannot change configuration in Jenkins, basically. Uh, all the things has to be done via pull request in our Git repository. And if you want to upgrade the jobs, either we ha there is a one initial, <coughs> as I showed you, there is a one job called seed. I'm, build I'm building something on my laptop. So there is a one job initial seed. Uh, if you run this job, and for example, you change the configuration to some GSL, you remove some jobs and so on and so forth, uh, it will remove the jobs for you or update all the jobs. So basically, it scans the repository of Jenkins DSL and runs every five minutes and update the jobs. Okay. Oh, here. Uh, so I have a question about like um, workflow. Uh, yep. Specifically, because uh, so is workflow more like an alternative to your solution, or you could mix those two? Because in workflow, you can uh, have a uh, source of Groovy from the Git repository, but you need to create the job by hand. So, could you like use your tool to provision it with like specific workflows, yes, which will course. fetch the Groovy configuration for workflow, which is actively developed, I think, currently? Yes, of course. And I was really confused about this workflow and Jenkins DSL. And what I've heard on JenkinsCon from Koshuka, it's like, it's not the, it's well, the Jenkins DSL is not going to replace workflow, and workflow is not going to replace Jenkins DSL. It's like two tools which can be used together to get your job done, basically. It's a, so you can use Jenkins DSL for as a initial creation for your workflow jobs. So if you have you are a heavy user of workflow, it's really easy to just create those jobs, initial jobs for workflow with Jenkins DSL. Okay, so like uh, in your initial seat, the jobs are created with some uh, job DSL workflow. No, job no, DSL with DSL API or with, with Jenkins some? DSL. So as I as I as, as you can see here, maybe let's get some simpler example. We have test job Groovy, right? So Jenkins DSL is like a DSL for creating jobs. So here you can see that we have some job definition. Uh, we're going to create 10 jobs. 
So we have job definition here. It will create DSL tutorial test with SCM URL right here and with such steps. So that's all. If you want to create workflow jobs, you have to cre recreate the steps as workflow, right? So you just create your initial workflow jobs with, with, with Jenkins DSL. So, so both plugins should be supported by the community and they will be actively developed, uh, hopefully? Yes, yes, I guess. I okay, hope so. Cool, thanks. OK, thank you for the questions. Any more questions from, from you? If not, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you.